Good morning guys, it's Vince. Um, I want to cover today in this video a um, component that usually is not appreciated to the end of the build of your CNC. I'll paint you a little picture. Typically you're at the final stages of the, of the CNC, everything is hooked up, motors are hooked up, you've got motion, your gantry is moving, X, Y axis, everything is set. Um, everything is looking good. You're ready to you know, do final completion. Now you're ready to hook up your spindle. Typically, you know, most guys do it at the end. Some guys do it in the beginning, whichever way you do it. If you go out to the box store, you realize you need a cable to hook up the VFD to the spindle, and you pick up a cable, you get home, hook the machine up, do your tramming, get everything set up. It's running perfect, you think. Everything is looking great. You start running the machine, a couple hours goes by, everything is looking good. You're getting your first cuts in, you're starting to make chips. Next thing you know, you're getting, these, you're getting that ghost in the machine effect. I mean, let me describe a problem that a lot of guys can relate to who have done this before. You start noticing your e-stop is triggering. If you're using a G540, which I hope you are, you're going to notice that the red fault light comes on by itself. Steppers may jitter. Steppers may move by themselves. They may lose steps. Um, all kinds of weird things. Monitor can get all kinds of funkiness on the screen. I've had, I've had people complain of that. Um, just all kinds of things. I mean, it's, it's just random problems. And if you guys know what I'm talking about, then you can attest to it. For those who don't know, it's, it's something called EMI, which is electromagnetic interference. Guys do a Google search on that. Um, basically, I'm not going to cover anything in detail with it other than the fact it's a pain in the ass when you're building your machine and have to go through that. Um, EMI is one of the hardest things to literally uh, isolate because we are using typically a metal substrate for our CNC chassis which acts as a big conductor and amplifies everything that you've done with your electronics because we're attaching all these electronics that are metal. you got your metal steppers, you probably have your control box near, you've got your computer, your monitor, um, and then you're amplifying it with a spindle and a VFD which the spindle is just a huge motor that pulls a lot of amps and the VFD is running 220 to it usually and there you go. Now you've, now you've got all this extra current going to this table, which is a giant conductor, and it's just making things go crazy. The hardest part to dictate with EMI is the fact that you can have a table running perfectly, and then all of a sudden, within a couple hours, it starts acting up, which means it can be an inconsistent problem, which makes it even harder to troubleshoot. The, the easiest thing to troubleshoot is a consistent problem, guys. When you deal with inconsistency, you will want to kill yourself. That's the easiest way to put it, mildly. Um, and mainly because you're t you, you know, I've had guys tear down their entire machine, start completely over, and realize that it was a cable causing the problem. Um, you don't want to be like that. You want to do it right the first time. Picture doing your CNC the first time right. And when I say right, that doesn't mean you cut corners on cables. That doesn't mean you cut corners on couplings. That doesn't mean that because this component is not increasing your access speed that you don't take it serious. Do everything to the best of your ability. And why I say that is, first of all, pride. Don't forget your pride because that's most important. But secondly, most important, don't forget doing things with that type of mentality that if I do it my best to my ability, my machine will reflect that. You are building a robot, and if you're building a robot, accuracy counts. So if your machine's doing wild things, of course, we're lacking accuracy, not to mention a safety issue, okay? I cannot emphasize that enough. There's never been a video I've ever seen on the cable for your spindle. I've seen a lot of videos of them actually playing around with these cables that they think are industrial grade, and they're hooking up these 220. Some guys are hooking up three-phase, four-phase, I got to be honest with you guys, 110 is bad enough to get a shock, okay? And 110 volt can actually kill somebody. We know that, okay? 220 is very serious. Um, it can cause involuntary reactions with the body. Typically, you'll get into a muscle lock configuration. Um, again, I've worked in an industrial environment before, and I can tell you truthfully, being around engineers my whole life and being an engineer myself, that you will find that it is highly, highly lethal in voltage, okay? Very few people would want to experience a 220 volt shock. It will leave burns. It can be, I mean, it can, actually it's one of the rarest voltage in that a lot of guys don't take it as serious because they see it as, you know, it's not that big a deal messing around with it. 
um, it can easily kill you guys. I'm, I'm being serious. It can easily kill you. Take it with that mentality. Realize the kind of voltage and real, realize the severity of what you're dealing with here. I cannot emphasize that enough. I, I see a lot of videos on YouTube that really don't take things serious. They kind of go through and, you know, you'll see guys wearing safety glasses and, you know, oh, safety is this and that. I'm telling you right now, the guys that appreciate safety the most, we always used to say this, guys that appreciate safety the most are the ones that have been injured. Okay? If you see a guy that's blind, he appreciates safety. Okay, if you see a guy who's got a burned hand, third degree burns, that's somebody who appreciates safety. Think about what I'm saying. It makes perfect sense. And believe me, you don't want to be one of those few statistics. That's not, you don't want to be the OSHA video that they're showing in the hospital of the guy with the third degree burns on his hands. That's not what you want to be. So trust me, take it very serious. If you're not comfortable around these type of voltages, be very careful. Your CNC, it's using DC voltage. 110 will shock the hell out of you. Um, 48 volt, you might blow something up. 220 is very serious voltage. And when you go past 220, I'm telling you right now, you better know what you're dealing with. Because you are, once again, I cannot emphasize it enough. You, you're really toying with death, more or less, if you don't know what you're doing. So just be careful. And realistically, that's why the cable choice, like I said, is so, so critical. I see a lot of different cables being used. I'm going to show you the right cable to use. And when I say the right cable, don't take my word for it. Go online, do some research. Um, I'm telling you right now, in a commercial environment, this is the kind of cable we would use for the job, especially for um, these applications. Typical spindles pull 220. They're probably running about 10 amps. You're getting an enormous amount of EMI. That being said, this cable, I'll start with the casing, is made out of a PVC casing. Um, it's super flexible. It's made for robotics. Um, not only is it made for robotics, but the cable itself, the outside casing, is rated to 600 volts. It's very, very heavy. Matter of fact, I have a piece of it right here so you can see what you're dealing with. Let's see if I can get in focus. There we go. Okay. Um, very, very heavy. Um, it's rated to 90 degrees Celsius in a dry environment. It'll do 75 degrees Celsius in a wet environment. Um, it is a uh, oil-resistant cable, so if you, if you do get any chemicals on this, you don't have to worry about anything. Um, a lot of guys don't even think about that, but if you're using a water-cooled spindle, you definitely want to use a cable that is chemical-resistant. Um, again, all details have been covered. This cable, and this is one of the best things about this cable, is not only is it foil shielded, it is braided shielded. Okay, Braiding is far more effective at shielding than foil, especially in high amp current draw environments. Now guys, look, when I tell you guys I do this full time, I hope you're getting in tune with the fact of the detail that I put in the components that I pick. These components are picked and are actually used in a commercial environment, and henceforth, we're just using the same type of commercial equipment, except it's smaller. So why wouldn't you use the same type of supporting components to actually support your machine? You're going to have a lot less problems, and you're never going to have to worry about replacing this unit. If you look at this, 16 AWG wire, full copper core, four lead, double shielded with drain. Um, you connect your ground, again, and I can't emphasize this enough, guys, real simple, connect your ground, which is your green wire, to the pin ground on your spindle. Your drain wire, which is probably the most misunderstood wire there is online, always goes to the chassis of the machine. Okay? You have, you don't want to cause a ground loop, so that drain wire will always go to basically short out that EMI interference if it's present. And I can guarantee you with a spindle, it'll be present. So you want that hook correctly, and once you do all that, I'm telling you right now, you will be so happy on how that machine runs. And really, it's one of those weird things. You know, you really can't appreciate it until the machine is running right, everything is going good, and you look at it and you're like, you know, I'm real proud that this is running, but four or five hours in, you're like, man, this is running smooth. You know, and you start realizing, you know, all this work now has paid off. That's when you know you did it. You know, consistency is everything. It's that longevity factor of I plugged the machine in. I didn't just run it for an hour. Everything is good. I've run it for six weeks, and nothing is giving me problems. That's what I shoot for. So if you think about it like that, do it right. This cable is not cheap. It's not cheap for a reason because it is, again, this is professional quality cable. You can use less. A lot of guys will go and say, well, my cable isn't that. I'm not using that. Well, so be it. 
You know, you can do whatever you choose. I'm telling you as an engineer what I recommend and why I recommend it. You're more than capable of making your own choices, and your machine may work fine. You know, but for a lot of the guys out there who don't know and who want to do it right the first time, I wanted to find a cable that, again, it had all the features required of a professional grade cable that they don't have to worry they can hook their machine up with. On top of that, find it to where it's not going to break the bank. Because when you start getting into these industrial kind of cables, guys, you will pay quite a bit for it. This is not cheap cable. Okay? The stuff that I've seen online, the stuff that you've seen online, if you go through YouTube and look at the videos, a lot of them are using just, you know, 18 gauge. They're using, you know, just ridiculous connections. I see wires that, you know, are just inferior for this type of, of commercial environment. What you're doing with those spindles and connecting them to a VFD, that's a lot of output, you know. Take that into consideration. Another thing to take into consideration also is labeling. I've seen a lot of times where, and I know this sounds kind of silly, but I got to say it because we are dealing with a lot of a lot of volts here. When you're hooking this stuff up, don't be afraid to leave yourself cheat sheets. You know, whether writing it on masking tape or leaving labeling, um, just to keep yourself aware. Um, I will be offering a graphics package, warning labels, because again, you don't know who will ever come in your shop. If you have a grandson in your shop or something, you want to make sure that they're well aware of what they're dealing with. This is no different than the type of commercial equipment we see. With, with lockout tagouts for you guys who are in a commercial environment, they understand that. You know, you always want to have your your strangers, so to speak, aware of your environment. If they go in your garage and they see this machine, it looks it's amazing to look at. I mean, most people when they first see them, they're they're pretty much in awe and they see movement and you don't know who's looking at it. They may put their hand down in the wrong spot. They may grab something. You don't know. You always should have that stuff done, it, even if it's not just for you, just so you're aware of what you're actually doing. But overall. Safety always comes first. On top of that, you're gonna get, you're gonna have a system that you're not gonna worry about EMI. I'm telling you, it's worth every dollar. So again, if you have any questions, let me know. I hope this video has been helpful. I hope you've learned something, and I hope I've covered something at least with safety with voltages. Because again, I've never seen. For some reason, no one's ever covered a video really covering um, the safety factor when you're dealing with these spindles and VFDs. Um, Another thing to take into consideration is the fact that they are made typically overseas. I mean, I deal with them. They're all made overseas. Um, and when that being said, you've got to hope that they've done everything right. And hoping that they've done everything right means you've got to pay attention to those type of things. You know, I check everything before I ship my stuff. We don't know if everybody else does. Um, we hope they do. But uh, just just be very careful of what you're dealing with and just, you know, take take heed on the fact that, what you're doing here is, is as critical as it is because without your spindle, we know your machine isn't cutting. But, you know, if you get hurt, you're not doing your family or you any good either. So just take that into consideration. If you guys have any questions, don't be afraid to message me. Um, I can get this in different lengths. I can, you know, I mean, I don't like carrying a lot of inventory on this because it is not cheap. But um, typically, if you need more than 10 feet, this is definitely the cable to use. I would not even think of going with another cable if you're going past 10 feet because, guys, remember, the longer you go, that amps, those amps are traveling that distance. That means there's even more EMI. So just take that into consideration. The longer you go, the more EMI you deal with and the better the quality of the cable you need. Um, on top of that, if you go thinner cable, um, 18 gauge and you know anything underneath 18 gauge, then you're dealing with that heat factor. You're dealing with 10 amps usually consistently. I'm telling you now, don't don't even think of going less than that, especially when with the factor that your spindle will be on for you know could be hours at a time depending upon how much use you're planning on doing. Um, heat is definitely a factor with this. So take it into consideration. If you guys have any direct questions that I didn't answer, don't be afraid to message me on eBay. We'll get it taken care of. Other than that, take care. Have a great weekend.